We were at the shop, I got a call, and this guy has a seat. It's an amphibious Jeep, which means you can drive it straight into the water and it becomes a boat. Hey, how's it going? Hi, Rick David. Nice to meet you. Corey. Corey. So we got a boat car. This thing is clean. Wow. It's pretty sweet. Very rarely do you see a car that needs an anchor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to sell my amphibious Jeep. The amphibious GPA is probably the most rare amphibian there is, so I spent extra time and care with it and spent around 3,000 hours in the restoration. Where did you find this amazing thing? In a barn in Wisconsin. I'm glad to report that I was able to restore this back to factory condition. These things just always make me laugh. I mean, I'd rather have a really good boat and a really good Jeep. Well, the fact of the matter is, though, literally, you could almost go anywhere on this thing. Even just high water in a stream or something like that would knock a Jeep out. This thing could go right through it. This thing could go across a lake. This would get you there, but just not as fast, right? That's correct. What it primarily was used for was a reconnaissance vehicle because it could go so many places and being 12 volt, which was very unique during World War II, it was an ideal radio jeep. So do you gotta register this thing as a boat and a car? I do have it registered as a boat and a car. It has two titles, and it's legal to go onto the road or in the water. So where's the prop on this thing? The prop is in the back. There's the uh, propeller and the rudder. It's kind of neat to be behind a GPA on the road because when I turn the wheels on dry land, the rudder turns. <laughs> it, it's almost like a uh, hand signal. I have a few customers that might be interested in this thing. Who? I know people, all right? Who do you know that collects boat cars? I know people who collect military stuff, all right? These are just incredibly rare, and to actually find one completely restored in working condition is amazing. It really is. So how much you want for this thing? $240,000. I mean, it's cool for a boat car, but that's Ferrari money. <laughs> <laughs> Let me call someone to come out here and take a look at this. Sure. I mean, if there's money to be made, I'm interested. OK. Wow. I've seen three of these in my life. One's at the Smithsonian. Other ones at the World War II Museum in New Orleans, and I saw one last summer in England, but never been restored, and it sold for $100,000. So is it all original? It's all original, the way it rolled out of the factory November 4th of 42. So for a collector, this is really the pinnacle. As you can see, this is a steel hull. It is very heavy. I mean, I really dig the thing. I'm just afraid of, I'm afraid of sinking. <laughs> The seep is rated to carry 500 pounds. The four of us are a little bit more than that. And since Alex and Corey are slightly less than real men, looks like me and the seller are going to go take it out in the lake. So you have taken it in the water before, right? <laughs> first time. It's the first time for everything. <laughs> that actually goes faster than I thought it would. Yeah. I am actually shocked on this thing. We take it out on the lake. It actually has a little bit of get up and go. That's a real boat. The thing is cool. That's awesome. I can't tell you how impressed I was when he just, just drove it right out of the lake. I mean, that was a steep hill. It was muddy, and it flew right through it. That was sweet. It like monster trucked out of the lake. It was awesome. So Alex, what do you think this thing would go for? It may be the only one in the world that can actually function as a boat and swim. So based on that, I think you could get 225000 for it. OK, man, thanks. This vehicle is a collector's dream. It is in mint condition, and it's incredibly rare. If Rick can get this for the right price, this is like banner headline type of piece for the shop. I mean, what will you realistically take for it? Uh, 240 I think, is realistic. I think that. Your expert was a little bit low. These always go up in value. So you wouldn't take like 180 for it? No, no, no. I don't think you could restore one for 180,000. Yeah, it's just I'm just looking at it as a business standpoint. You know what I mean? Change your mind. 180. Um, 180. I'll keep that in mind. It was nice. Thanks for the ride, though, dude. Oh, it was that's fun. A, that's, a, that's amazing. Now you can cross it off your bucket list that you rode in a seat.
I wasn't able to make a deal today. I believe the price is too low. But I was able to give Rick the most legal fun he's had in a long time. I just got a call from some guy who says he's got some high-tech military vehicle for sale. Sounds like something he should be selling to the Pentagon. But I'm going to go check it out. Maybe I can get it first. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> what in the world is this? Batman's tank. <laughs> it's a prototype hybrid intended for the military. Awesome. My intention was to drive it, use it, and sell it. I realized I didn't have the expertise to put it back together. Uh, the lowest I would probably take would be about 85000 So where exactly did you get it? The company that built military components. They spent over a million dollars building it, and I couldn't pass it up. All right. Well, it is pretty badass, I can tell you that. Had a gun on top? That's a camera that holds a gun. It held a 50 caliber or an M16. Set up like a fighter pilot. You've got a, a navigator and a gunner. They're all behind bulletproof glass. Obviously, someone did spend a lot of money on it. Military contractors spend millions developing prototypes like this. And if the Pentagon actually orders these things, the payoff could be astronomical. So I can get in? Absolutely. Don't hurt yourself now. Yeah, this is not exactly fat guy friendly. <laughs> well, I don't think they wanted people to get out of it. Actually, it's not too bad. Yeah, see? Especially if you were in military shape. <laughs> <laughs> this is also some sort of composite material right here that's bullet resistant? It's a Kevlar fiberglass composite. Have you ever fired a couple rounds at it? Um, I was planning <laughs> on doing that next. I would have done it already. <laughs> now, have you driven it? I haven't driven it. They didn't give me the way to start it. You know what? This would be a lot of brain damage trying to figure out how to get going, especially when there's no manual. Right. Come on, Rick. You've got the biggest head at the shop. You can figure it out. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so how much are you looking to get out of it? I'm asking 150. I don't know whether to tell you you're crazy or maybe. <laughs> I'm a little crazy. <laughs> um, there's a lot of doomsdayers and bunker nuts, and uh, you know somebody is gonna want this. Um, do you mind if I call up somebody? I don't know who you could possibly know that would know anything about it. I know a guy who deals a little bit in military vehicles. He might be able to help me out with this. Okay. All right. Yeah, I think that'd be a great idea. As soon as I figure out a way to get out of here, I'm gonna give him a call. <laughs> <laughs> I hope the guy knows what he's talking about. There are a lot of expensive components that are not gonna be able to be seen just by crawling around the vehicle. This is the apparatus. Nice. <laughs> Will is a former Army Ranger and Air Force pararescue man. And even though I hate to admit it, he knows a lot more about modern military equipment like this than I do. So yeah, I'm actually familiar with this. It's very cool. I mean, obviously, there were some guys that put some real time and effort and engineering into this. Something you could put a, a small team of guys in and move them very quickly on the battlefield, faster than you could in a tank or something like that. I spent 15 years in the military. Special operations is what I do. Some people think you have to be a little crazy to be in special ops. I prefer to think of it as uh, gifted, not crazy. So is this legal to own? Yeah, I know guys that own Hellcat tanks that actually shoot. So, I mean, there's no reason <laughs> why you can't own this. Now, whether or not it's street legal is, is another question. It's got headlights and blinkers and it should all work, but right, it should. Should. So how come the military never bought these? With this particular vehicle, I mean, I see a lot of complicated mechanical parts and wires running everywhere. It doesn't look like it's going to hold up to an IED blast. Why would you go with a vehicle like this that tactically uh, just looks unmanageable? Getting your product picked up by the government, it's a hard, hard process to go through. You're going to spend a lot of money developing it, and if you fail, you just wasted all your time and money. So can you figure out a price on this thing? The engine alone is probably worth anywhere from seven to $13,000. The body itself, it looks cool, but what are you gonna do with it? I would say maybe $25,000, $30,000 tops. Really? You really think that low, huh? Collectors want vehicles that were actually used by militaries around the world. Because this is a prototype, the fact that it doesn't work could become an issue. I can't see a whole lot of people going after this thing. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. No worries. Thanks a lot.
millions of dollars went into the development of that vehicle, but millions of dollars also went into the development of tourniquets. And a tourniquet costs $35. So you still want 150 grand for it? The high dollar parts that are in this thing. We're still just over 100 grand. We don't know if anything works. Are you interested in it at all? I mean, for like 20 grand. To get this thing running is anywhere between 50 bucks and 500,000. It's okay. 20 grand on the table, man. 95,000 is kind of what I got to be at. We're just way too far apart. OK. OK. If you change your mind, give me a call. All right. I've got a couple other offers. If the next offer is the right offer, then I'll let it go. Earlier, I got a call from a guy looking to unload an old Mercedes. So Corey and I are headed out to take a look. I thought it was a Mercedes. It is a Mercedes. 1962. The Mercedes Unimog, a German military vehicle. Well, obviously, it's a Mercedes, but I, it's totally not what I expected. I thought it was a car. <laughs> I called the guys down at the pawn shop to check out my Unimog. It feels awesome to drive this. I'd like to sell it because I need another project. I would love to get something like $22,000 for it. All right, so tell me about it. This Unimog was a model called the Radio Box, and the inside was filled with shells and radios. The Germans used to hide in the woods, you know, listening to the Russians during the Cold War with this thing. It was very, very versatile. Yeah, these trucks are really cool. I mean, they have massive torque. It'll climb anything. It'll ford rivers. It'll go just about anywhere. It also has an articulated chassis. It'll bend. So if it goes into a hole, it pretty much stays level all the time. It's meant to be off-road. The Unimog was designed in Germany right after World War II. They were originally designed to be used on farms. But the things were so damn tough, they became popular with militaries around the world. So it's your standard military vehicle, extremely uncomfortable and bare bones. Yep. Can you start it up for us? Sure. Um, it's an old Mercedes motor, but it looks in good shape. Um, I don't see any leaks. The Unimogs are cool. It's every kid's dream to have a truck like that. It can drive through anything. But I've never bought or sold one of these things before. So figuring out a price is going to be tricky. OK, you ready to buy it? Uh, depends on how much you want for it. Well, I would like to get about $22,000 for it. OK, before I make you an offer, i got to figure out what this thing's worth. I don't think there's a Kelly Blue Book on Unimogs. So do you mind if I get someone down here, have them take a look at it, and um, let's go from there, all right? OK. All right, I'll be right back. Sounds good. Thank you very much. I'm thrilled that they're calling in an expert. And I'm very confident that it'll get a good report. Wow. Unima. That's it. Sweet, man. The guys usually call me to come check out any kind of a vehicle, a, a car, a truck, a hot rod, whatever it may be. It looks beautiful. The engineering in this is just way ahead of its time, man. I love that axle design. You know, they, they do that on the Hummers, you know, the H1s. Yeah. The portal gears in there. Keeps the axle high, but it keeps the vehicle lower to the ground. This was kind of cutting edge back then. But the Unimogs, I mean, they started off life as, as basically tractors, but their real forte was military use. The fact that the chassis flexes like that, which allows the vehicle to go anywhere, I really believe that the Unimogs were way ahead of their time. That it's sounds great. Have you driven it yet? Uh, no. Do you mind if we take it for a spin? No, please do. I mean, when you really think about what these things had to do, and, and they're still in this good a shape, that's a yeah. tough vehicle. Should we do a little off-road now? Yep, that's exactly what I planned on doing. I love it. Yeah! It's too bad they're just driving on these flat streets. If they took it, you know, off-road, they would have a blast. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. This is comfortable. <laughs> Everything really worked absolutely as it should on this vehicle. I think my spine's at least two or three inches shorter than it was before we started. So is there a market for these things? Yeah, there is, believe it or not. They, they've they've kind of got this uh, cult following. It's it's not like a, you know, a market for a Harley Davidson or something, you know, it's, it's a narrower market, but there is, there's a market for it. I've seen them going nice ones, 17,000, maybe $18,000 mark. I would classify this one as nicer, really nice. This is probably the nicest one I've ever seen. Okay. 
So, in my opinion, it should go for more than that. Okay. Thanks for letting me come out and do this, man. This was fun, and thanks for that ride, man. I'm gonna go get the blood circulating back in my legs again. <laughs> thanks again. Nice meeting you, man. It was a pleasure. Thanks. I am fired up to make an offer on this thing. I could definitely sell it to a military collector or an off-roader who would actually use it. So how much were you looking to get out of it? I'd really like to get 22. I think it's in such good shape. I've put a lot of money into it. It runs like new. That's you knew when you put the money into it, though, you weren't going to get it back, right? I think I, I, think I did. I've, I've done this before, so okay. you expect to get some of it back. Um, it is in very nice shape, but it's not an easy sell. This is really limited market, OK? And I can give you 15 grand today. Mm -hmm. You walk away, and it's done. 15 is a, a lot lower than I ever thought. I know you have to make a profit, but I mean, I would really say I'd, I'd take 18 right now, and that, that I think would be my, my bottom line. What do you say? Um, uh, I'm the one taking all the risk. I mean, mm -hmm. the motor blows up tomorrow, I'm stuck with it. So yeah, I'll tell you what, I'll do 16,000. 16,5, I think I can make a deal. I'm looking, it's probably going to take me a while to sell this, so mm -hmm. 16,000. That's what I could do. Um, OK, we have a deal. All right. Thank you. I'm happy. You know, I'm ready to get on with another project. And now my driveway will be clear, and I could get my other car out. I cannot wait to show this to the old man. <laughs> <laughs> so what in the hell do we have here? This is a 1941 M3 armored scout car for the Army. This looks like something right out of MASH. Is this thing bulletproof? Yes, it is. Sweet. I decided to come to the pawn shop today to sell my M3 armored scout car. I paid $25,000 for this truck. I was hoping to get $28,000 if possible. I'm sure it can only appreciate. It's like gold. It can only go up. So where did you get this thing? I was driving through Barstow, and uh, my son saw it. And he's a, a military buff, and we sent it at a tow yard. They said it was all original, and I had to have it, so I went in there and bought it. And now you're tired of it? No, I'm going to prospect up in Alaska, and I need some money, and I'm going to oh. go on to the next adventure. OK. It's not every day that someone rolls up the shop in an armored vehicle used in World War II. If this truck is genuine, I know some military collectors who will go nuts over it. And I mean, it does look cool. It would be fun to drive it up and down the strip every once in a while. So uh, let's see what it's got under the hood. Let's do it. Damn, this thing's heavy. Meant to stop a bullet. That's definitely not a 1941 motor. That's like a late 80s, early 90s Dodge turbo diesel. Do you know how many miles are on it? Uh, very low. Had it in the garage the whole time. Other than that, I don't know that much more about it. So it's a different steering column. Well, this is, this is how I bought it. So I don't know what's been changed on it or whatnot, but. Someone's restored it somehow or the other. I mean, it's got a brand new paint job on it, I'll tell you that. To tell you the truth, I have no idea what a 1941 Scout vehicle goes for. Uh, if we can drive this down to a buddy shop of mine, he actually deals in this kind of stuff, and we can get it all checked out. I'm all for that. OK. I'm looking forward to going to the expert, take a look at this, and uh, we'll know where we stand. Hey, David, how's it going? Hey, guys. This is why we came by. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the owner of Army Trucks, Inc. We supply military vehicles to motion pictures, TV commercials. This is a 1941 uh, Scout car, it looks like. They're made from the late 30s to about 1944. They use these to go ahead of the tanks to scout out the enemy. So Rick, what are your concerns? It looks like a lot of stuff on it's been replaced. So we, we basically have a 1941 body here. When I'm analyzing a truck like this, I basically uh, look for originality. I look for obvious flaws. Wow. Guys, I see some numbers here, which lend some authenticity to the vehicle. So I'm going to keep looking. Well, quarter-inch armor, that's good. Let's pop the hood. Definitely the correct hood, but that's not correct. Modernized. Yeah, that's what's concerned me. Like, everything underneath looks modernized. So, Rick, you want the good news or the bad news? Give me the bad news. Well, the bad news, this thing is pieced together. OK. The only thing original is probably the first foot of this truck 
and this looks like an M3 chassis, but everything after that underneath looks like a modern pickup truck. So what's the good news? The good news is somebody put a lot of time and effort and money into making this thing to look like this. As a vehicle collector myself, it does have the wow factor. So what's a wow factor worth? A pristine one of these is worth about 100000 original one. This, I think, up to 20000 OK. All right. Thanks. It's not an original 1941 Army truck, but it still looks badass. There's definitely a market for military reproduction vehicles, so I'm still interested in buying it. I came here thinking one thing, now I have to think about something completely different. So uh, before we talk money, let me take this thing for a spin, okay? Sounds good to me. All right, you guys ready to go? Let's go. Let's get some wow factor going. <laughs> This thing is a hell of a lot of fun to drive. I'm definitely interested. So long as this guy keeps in mind, it's not a 100% all original military truck. Hopefully, we'll come together on a price. Yeah! Woo! What do you think? Pretty badass. Um, yeah, it's pretty badass, but what the hell am I gonna do with it? That's my problem I'm thinking about. So realistically, what are you looking to get out of this thing? Well, I know I paid 25 for it, and now that I know from your expert what it's worth, I know that's gone. But I gotta have at least 19 or 20. I mean, it's just not going to happen, man. I'll, I'll go 11 grand, but it's going to be it's going to be really difficult to sell. You know, when I first looked at it, cool old World War II collectible army truck. It's not that. I mean, basically, you got a 20-year-old truck here with a bunch of steel bolted to it. Still paid twenty-five thousand dollars for it. What you paid for it is immaterial to me. <laughs> and and it has it has value, it has intrinsic value. Limited, limited, limited market. How about fifteen thousand dollars? It won't happen. Eleven thousand dollars? I mean, I, I, I'm taking a bath with that. I might as well just park it in my backyard and make a bird bath out of it. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. I just can't that's what I can do. Well, I appreciate you looking at it. Sorry we couldn't make a deal, man. Kind of disappointed. 11,000 is kind of a slap in the face. I'd rather have the wow factor myself. It's still a cool item. It's a cool piece. I'll park it back in the garage. Fourth of July, come down where we're at and see the parade. Hey, I got a bike I want you to take a look at today. All right, Pops, I'm right in the middle of something. You mind uh, taking a look at this? What do you got? I got this motorcycle I want you to take a look at. Uh, bring it around back. Pops, come and look at a motorcycle with me. All right. This guy better have one hell of a nice bike. I don't leave my chair for just any piece of junk. <laughs> oh, a Cushman. That's right. This is not a motorcycle, Rick. Technically, it's a motorcycle. I got the motorcycle from my grandfather's garage. I just knew that it was old and that it was used for transportation. The least I would take is 2000 It's definitely cool, man. God, I didn't even know these things were around anymore. Cushman was a company that built all these small vehicles for the military, and you could zip around a large factory on a large piece of land, and uh, you get a lot tighter spots with it. Mm -hmm. You can tell just by looking at a Cushman, they're not like other bikes. These things were built to take serious abuse, and by the looks of it, this thing has definitely been through the ringer. In the Second World War, the military bought some Cushman to be parachuted into a battle. It was called a Cushman Airborne. So you're telling me this might have been used during World War II? According to the, what I've read about them in the past. It does sort of look like it was dropped out of a plane. <laughs> does the engine work? No, I don't think so. Don't break it, Rick. We had not bought it yet. Uh, there ain't no break in this thing. It is what it is. Uh, you have any of the other parts? No, this is what I got. Yeah, it's missing a few things. It's interesting, though. I like it. It's definitely different. Um, I'm sure there's not a lot of these around. I, I don't think there's a lot of them around. I know some Cushmans are collectible, but this thing's in pretty rough shape, so I don't know if I should walk away or buy it and get it restored. How much did you want for it? Uh, I was thinking around 5000 
Well, if this is vintage World War II, that price might not be out of bounds. Let me have someone look at it. My buddy's just around the corner. Let me go give him a call. He's always talking about Cushman bikes, so I know he's going to have an idea what this thing is worth. OK, yeah. thanks. Hey, guys, what's up? We got Cushman. Yeah. This thing's pretty heavy duty. Where's the other half? <laughs> I've been restoring everything since I was a little kid. Uh, I just love to take things apart and make it look uh, great again. Cushman started in the early 1900s. Their motors became famous, and then in the 30s, they decided to make a scooter. And they were friggin' monsters off-road. Good little bike. Cushman had a good motor. And back in the early 20s and 30s, they had a quality product. So this is the Cushman Airborne, right? Um, no. Huh? It's half of a Cushman Trailster. A Trailster? What the heck is that? Made in the 60s, but it was supposed to look like a dirt bike. OK. So an Airborne was just a completely different bike? Yeah, it was mass produced for the military. This is just for off-road. So someone just wanted to make it look like a World War II vehicle? I mean, it's painted army green. This is all just somebody did this, you know? OK. Moments like these are really disappointing. I was really hoping this thing was vintage World War II. And I can't imagine a trail bike from the 1960s missing this many parts is going to be worth my time. Do these things sell for any money? There's a big demand for Cushman scooters. It's collectible. But what are you missing? The gas tank, the seat, the carburetor, tires, and the motor. You're probably talking about $500. No way. Is it even worth restoring? Yeah, they're worth restoring because there is a market. Yeah, and what's it going to cost to restore it? Probably with all the parts, you're at $2,500. You can restore it for $2,500? This one, yes, because it's collectible. And what, what are they worth restored? Restored, you probably get about $4,500 for it. Yeah, I was thinking more around 5,000, like it is. I think it's really rare. Oh, that was ridiculous. I couldn't believe it. If I, if I could get the 5,000 for that, I'd retire tomorrow. All right, man. Thanks. All right. If I buy it, I'll give you a call. Good luck with it, Rick. All right, so what are you thinking? 300 bucks. How about 15? No, <laughs> I mean, we have a beat up old scooter. How about five? You don't see them too often. Rick, split it at four and let's get it done. Yeah, I'll give you 400 bucks. All right, I guess that'll have to do. OK, all right, 400 bucks, man. Follow me, we'll go write it up. I'll give you some cash. Thanks. I definitely have a soft spot for mini bikes. This Cushman is basically a pile of junk right now. But Bob is a restoration genius, and I can't wait to see what he can do with it. Hey, Rick, don't you want this thing? I was sitting out <laughs> back waiting for you, and nobody's home. That looks amazing. I hope so. It was one tough resto. Oh, wow. A banana scooter? Bob's been restoring a Cushman bike that I bought. When I bought it, it looked like crap and was missing a lot of parts. But he said it was worth fixing up. Now I get to find out if he was right. If you remember, this thing needed over 80 pieces. <laughs> yeah. It looks brand new. I got everything original. And most of even the nuts and bolts came out of the Cushman factory at one time. That is pretty amazing. We took it apart, went through the transmission, put new chains on it. That's even an original gas tank. I took all the dents out and polished the hell out of it. And then I had it powder coated. Wow. I rode it last night. My wife kept yelling at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this looks like it'd be really fun to ride. I might have to take it for a little cruise. You're not riding it. <laughs> <laughs> that was, he fixed it, did a test run. You would be taking it for a joy ride. There's a difference. All right, the big question, how much do I owe you? Well, I know I quoted you 2500 We had to bump it up, and I hate to do that, but it's, it's at 32 
Okay, so I paid 400 bucks for it, 3,200 to fix it. You put it to the right collector, the right venue, you will get over $5,000 for it because everything is original. It's not a fortune, but hey. Hey. Pays the light bill, at least. That's it. Okay. That's Thanks, it. Thanks, man. Let me go pay you. Very good. Chum, put it in the warehouse, push it there. Okay. Hello. Hi, how are you? Pretty good. Good. Interesting. Isn't it? It's a bicycle, Rick. Due to the color, I'm assuming it's probably some sort of military bicycle. Do you know anything about it? I just know it's from World War II. Did you ever ride this thing? No. Uh, you say that like it's a bad thing. I would have been all over this. I came to the pawn shop today to sell my great-grandfather's bike from World War II. The bike's been sitting in my garage since I was little, and my mom said I can sell it and put it to my college education. I'm not really sure how much it's worth, but I'm hoping I can get a 1000 for it. That is really neat. During World War II, the soldiers over in Europe were shipping everything from bicycles to guns to silverware to artwork, all these things that were considered war prizes back to the United States. Man, for some reason, your great-grandpa brought a bike back. Yep. The sprocket's really cool where it says BSA. Birmingham Small Arms they made rifles, handguns. Yeah. It looks like it folds up. It does. I don't know if that's for shipping or something like that. Do you mind if I take a closer look at it? Not at all. Sweet. Don't break it, Rick. I'm not going to break it. Yeah, see, it folds up mm -hmm. for easy transportation. It's pretty cool. What is this, like a little horn? Uh, no, that's a, an acetylene lamp on the front of it. Acetylene lamp? Yes. Why wouldn't they just put a flashlight on that? They had flashlights and all that, but the batteries wore out really, really quick and that was super reliable. Pour some water in there, it creates a settling gas, you light it, and it lights up. Sort of like a blowtorch. Mm -hmm. This folding bike is really cool. I don't know exactly what it was used for, but there's usually a collector's market for just about anything World War II military. So I guess there's gotta be some money to be made here. It's a pretty neat bicycle, looks all complete. Um, how much are you looking to get out of it? I'm hoping I can get a thousand for it. Would you take three hundred bucks for it? How about five hundred? Don't be a cheapskate, Rick. This thing is obviously dope. That it is. I'm really intrigued by it. I mean, like regular bicycles in this shape from World War II aren't worth a whole lot of money, but it does look military-ish. This thing could have rode down to Hitler's bunker, Rick. You don't want to pass on this bike. I doubt if they attacked it with bicycles. You never know, you weren't there. <sighs> you know what, yeah, I'll do the 500 bucks. Good, thank you. Okay, uh, go right her up, chum. All right, come on with me, I'll write you up. This bike has been sitting in my garage since I was little and I got $500 for it and I'm happy. What kind of boat is this? Oh, that's a cool boat. What's it made of? All aluminum made by Douglas Aircraft Company after World War II in 1946 or 1947. They started making these because they had all this aluminum fabrication equipment for making airplanes, and they needed to make something else. So they decided to try the small boat for the family. The advertising slogan was, it'll fit in the back of the family station wagon. Where's the family going to go? Well, they got to go in another car they can ride on top. <laughs> I don't think this would be hard to resell. How much you want for this thing? 500 bucks. You know what, Chum? You're my boat expert, right? Yeah. What do you think it's worth? Gotta be worth 300. This is my boat expert right here. Everybody can claim to be an expert in something. I mean, come on. Spencer claims to be an expert all the time. Uh. Well, hey, listen, <laughs> I, I can tell you I'm an expert right now. You're being cheap on this one. Step it up. This all is right, a no, cool, no, unique no, piece. All right, 375. 400. 380. 400. 380. And we'll meet in the middle, 385. All right, I'm tired of arguing. <laughs>